Hi, everyone. You can go to any bookstore or look at the internet and you'll find that we're still asking the same questions in the area of our existence in the world. Whether we are NASA, 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 NASA scientists or um, philosophers, are we alone in the universe? Does intelligent life exist elsewhere? Were we created? What is God? Were we created? As a question. What is God? Scientists, philosophers, theologians. We're still asking these questions. I want you to consider this for a second. We now know for sure, I mean, we've known it for a while, and we could, we could have probably concluded this a long time ago. But it's been recently that we've really seen what the nature of human intelligence, science, is, pers is pursuing. We're very interested in biology. We want to see if we can create uh, modifications and perhaps life itself somehow to uh, modifications to living organisms we're interested in knowing the biology of other worlds our mind is fascinated captivated by by creation by how life develops evolves and we know that this intelligence, this new um, turbo leap that we've taken in sciences is but a minute of a calendar that would be 365 days representing the time since we've descended from trees, right? Um, and at the same time, we know that the time that humanoids, human beings, even before, let's say, including the time before we, we could write and had languages, complex language, is also another minute or a day or what have you in the 365 day model of how long life has existed, different forms of animals have existed on the planet. I'm probably off by a great deal, but you, you get more or less the, the, the fraction concept of, uh, of time and chronology regarding the, the length in which we have been as intelligent as we are now and the length in which life has existed as social being social and socially intelligent beings on this world we also know that worlds could be a hundred a thousand ten thousand times older than our world which means that in a world that, let's say, is three times larger in the same conditions around an, a proportionately equal distance and situation uh, around another star, this could have been happening twice as much for 10 times longer. So imagine if we have evolved in this last minute within a, a, a year long model of a, a scale to give us an idea what we could be maybe in another 
10,000 years because the curve, and we know a lot about exponential curves lately, we see the impossibility of the speed in which we're populating Th these, uh, the planet, it seems like we won't be able to fit in the world a hundred years from now. I'm sure we'll do something. Uh, the same exponential curve occurs. Why did I out of focus? Uh, in, 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 the, in the sophistication of our sciences, regardless, which is a whole other argument of how aired and and self-destructive and how off we can be in our sciences and our systems the the energy the production uh, in that exponentially increasing curve is nonetheless very real now we also know that there are billions of stars billions and and of course we all heard the analogy of the grains of sand on the beach. And I don't know, take a third of those, even if a tenth, even if a hundredth of those had worlds of which only a hundredth of those, of that hundredth had worlds similar to the environments that would need to produce living, breathing organisms with conscious intelligence and possibly uh, the same aspirations as it is so it is so understandable that any life form would look up and want to go to that other planet once it realized that they're all balls around the sun and they want they will want to hop from one ball to another <laughs> from one planet to another like uh the the proliferation of life as we see on our earth is uh, its own universality plants spread animals spread plants and animals cross the oceans so it stands to reason that other life forms in other worlds will be very much interested beyond their world will not stay confined to their planet so what does this mean that in other worlds and hundreds of thousands of other worlds that are not so far away, not, not, not unimaginably far away from us, there are a certain number of beings that are way more ahead of, uh, of in the, the game of cosmic evolution than we are. And knowing that there, we're interested in our own biology and expanding outwards to other worlds and understanding why we exist or what created us and so forth and seeing how that is happening in other parts of the universe it stands to reason that we are not yet to be discovered but in fact we're most likely created were at least at the very least we're being watched and observed maybe we're uninteresting as carl sagan once said perhaps we're uninteresting to other life forms but more than likely we are an intention we are because we would have done the same we may do end up doing the same we may be uh, the way this species of, of conscious life of uh, very similar forms of the same hominid spreads throughout the universe um, these ideas are now tangible they're no longer science fiction we can simply run the statistics and the math and therefore we can easily conclude almost as if we had evidence or fact that um, that we are the will or the intention or the creation of a life form in the universe which consciously for whatever reason does not want us to know <laughs> it's there <laughs> there may be a good reason it doesn't have to be a, a bad reason uh, it may be necessary for our own 
awakening, for our own self-fulfillment, for our own realization. We may become stunted and blocked if all of a sudden we know these lords are, are running planets and in other galaxies, we may not want to be so interested in surviving or, or not know what, how to survive anymore. We may get confused. Perhaps it's part of a, a healthy situation that we're kept uh, un, not knowing. And so one may ask, so how, why are you saying this now then? <laughs> how come you, why, <laughs> why would somebody be able to discover that if they didn't want to? Well, here we are. We may be in an era that we're coming to the threshold. And I'm one of a few thousand people in the world who are starting to put two and two together um, and wanting to talk about it, to see if maybe something can happen. This said, this said, always in the same subjects, the existential questions of philosophers and scientists and theologians, There is something that is um, starkly unique about the human being compared to all conscious life, living forms, creatures, animals, and, and plants, but mainly the ones we can relate to a little bit better, which are the ones that have social societies and families, um, which is that they have um, a very short distance in some cases, non-existence, non-existent distance between what I call their natural base creature intelligence, which is that intelligence that reasons your immediate, spontaneous, intuitive needs and, and cognitive reasonings, uh, awareness of things to do and things to move, places to go and what where something else is heading, the primitive intelligence, call it, um, the primitive awareness, intelligence of behavior and, and action and thinking, what to do to satisfy your anxiety or your hunger or your tiredness or what have you. Um, and then there is the capacity that we have, you know, that we, when we, we nail our eyes on something and all of a sudden the human being is inventing and seeing how it works and, and why that happens and we understand the complexities of physics and we invent and research and have come up with all the systems, all the systems and all the sciences that human civilization has created and invented. And in this uniqueness, right there, right there alone, it seems, wow, we are the only creature among all animals that stands, you know, it, it doesn't have a, a pencil to make a mark on, on a tree with, but he has a computer and all the other, the animals are trying to scratch the tree and make, make a mark, or maybe they have a little pencil, you know, maybe they figured out, a bird figured out a little twig, how to pull the worm out, or a beaver knows how to build a dam, but then they they don't care to maintain it. They don't understand exactly what the wonder of their own invention is. Their distance from natural base uh, animal intelligence to their logical complex intelligence is very shallow, while ours is 10,000 times uh, further. And I speak of it as a distance because it's important to realize that there's a distance, there is a, 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 um, a distance between these two, and, and this polarity of these two minds, these, these two extremes of, uh, or, 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 um, or categories of intelligence. And one thing that we can definitely conclude is that our own marvelous, unique, very sophisticated and advanced intelligence, which is hypothesizing how other life forms may have evolved in another planet, and no other creature is doing that in the world, um, doesn't seem to harmonize 
in the same way that all other animals, other animals and life forms do with its own possessor, its own, its own body. It invents chemistry and things that end up creating, uh, dirtying the environment, intoxicating their bodies, weapons that kill its own offspring by the hundreds, uh, out of control, uh, sciences that go on wrongly, um, and we are submerged in not knowing how to change our world. We continue to live with these mistakes, and, and we know, and, and scientists will say, you know, the, the given, the constant of sciences is it's, it's failure. Well, um, and our sciences are everything, whether it's the judicial system, uh, the invention of uh, artifacts, transportation, or or civil systems of uh, government, and, and anything that is an invention of the complex logical reasoning of mankind is one of our sciences. And they all, uh, we have learned to live mediocrely. Some we are able to change as we go along, we don't seem to mind uh, seeing that they hurt us. Others we seem, we seem to be blocked. We don't uh, realize or we don't conceive of ourselves as a whole collective being enough to say, wow, that's not, that's not working. There's starving poor people, we're killing children. No, let's chuck that and let's try it again. We're not able to, to do that with some of our sciences. And, um, and what I'm proposing is that the reason that we're unable to is because we're not aware that this is sort of like an added and intentional capacity, something that a cosmic evolution in its harmony that takes eons and eons did not uh, move together with the body. It seems that part of our mind is at the same, close to the same level of uh, some simians it seems that the same things make them happy, and when others in their clan are laughing, they get happy too, and we do the same with our, our base, uh, baseline uh, uh, primitive intelligence, that part, that extreme of the polarity that I'm trying to describe. But with the other extreme of the polarity that I'm describing, um, which it stands out immensely and leaves all the other um, animals in another world practically, uh, we demonstrate that we don't harmonize with the species for its survival. And why do, can we dis define that? Because all life forms have one, one central core primary directive, as it's been taught to us, to evolve. The sun, um, shines light, warms the planet, sprouts life forward, and everything is proliferating, advancing, growing, consuming, maturing, combusting, mo radiating, moving forward, joining. It's a, it's a forward advance, evolution and life pushed by the power of the stars. The, the, the light is a forward uh, force uh, even within its complexities, it's always going forward as a ruling force. And so are human beings and all animals. We uh, are first love, light, forward, going, keep going until there's no more to burn, <laughs> so to say. Um, and this is getting a little existentially philosoph philosophical or theological because it proposes not that we're born in sin or that we are condemned to some kind of uh, contradiction, uh, uh, a permanent contradiction that we are stuck in or something. No, it means that it has an order and that order is first forward, then we run into the planet that uh, burdens us with 
challenges to the, the thriving forwardness of life. Gravity, physics, biology, which attacks our own bodies, um, and what have you. And so we react in ways of confronting those challenges. And therefore, we develop a desire to keep pushing forward because the first force, remember, is wanting to thrive. Life wanting to keep evolving and pushing forward until there's nothing else to exhaust. And so the first, the mind develops the intelligence to overcome as its primary developmental shaping of intelligence. And at the, at the very core of why we exist is to survive and overcome all the obstacles that the planet has challenged us with. Now, the, the extreme sophisticated um, high intelligence uh, that I described as different to animals and the one that's closer to Earth, to our bodies, to very much more in sync with our harmoniously with our bodies and, 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 and life and, and similar and closer to animals, the base intelligence and other creatures, both have the same purpose because they're both serving us. There's no opposition between high logical reasoning and our natural intelligence, which some people are arguing, have been arguing that we have this contradiction nature versus um, technology or, or, or science, right? Uh, actually, no, they both come from the same being who um, is sort of a hybrid of nature and something that's very intelligent, but also natural in the cosmic sense. And uh, it is not partially artificial. It is just very, very capable compared to this little world. We can supposedly, we should be able to, you know, rope up any biology and, and dump. We're demonstrating that. Now, the way we see it is that we're growing towards that. But that capacity had, had, had to be there for us to be able to dominate biology. So it was given early on what has been developed is our knowing how to use it. Um, that's, and we're getting to a place where we could cure all diseases. Uh, that capacity has, has been with us for a long time. It's not, all, uh, we are an ex civilization, uh, the, the, the social form of civilization is a construct of education. It's not that we're becoming more intelligent, it's that we needed to first learn, it's like layers. And so we paint a layer of social knowledge, general education in, in many different areas. And, and that gives us a jumping, a base, you know, a jumping board to go on to. And then once we incorporate that, we reach that other level and then other things follow it. And, and um, so th there's that as, as we're three-dimensional, we're traveling beings in time, meaning that we're growing with our own education, but our capacity has always been there. And, um, oops, I got lost. I got lost where I'm going to conclude. Let me pause here for a second. Okay, so, how? So far, I haven't said anything that, um, that is too out there or we haven't heard in some form in some book at the Bodhi tree read or what have you. But um, this is the part that is the, the higher concept in this whole dissertation, the, the introduction, the new element. If we have one extreme of our, uh, one polar extreme of our intelligence, the immediate, the spontaneous, the natural, the one that makes us a little closer to the existence of animals as knowing where we are, living in the moment, what have you. 
doing what we think, understanding what we see quickly, immediately. And this other intelligence, which I'm proposing, didn't, it's kind of the intention of other creators. God, aliens, whatever you want to call it, it's introduced to, it was intention, maybe through evolution itself, because the scale of creators may, may be, evolution may be only like a hundred years to them, you know, or a thousand, you know, or 500 years, and, and they're totally into projects that last 500 years. To us, it's like maybe a hundred thousand years, but in any case, I mean, I'm saying there is no separation between evolution and God. Uh, God being God and heaven being creators, and intelligence in other in another in other worlds or in another, in another world. It was um, did not evolve this other polar extreme of our intelligence that is capable of, of everything that we've. Uh, and more that we haven't discovered where we can reach with this capacity yet is obviously, and this is what I'm saying, it's obviously not in harmony with the prime intent of the human creature, which is to survive, satisfy its own secure um, evolution and thriving proliferation going forward. Um, more or less, every living creature we see uh, advances, grows, pushes, thrives, and multiplies. Um, it does not, you know, does not fall in on itself. It does not go and kill, it does, uh, it does not do immense mistakes um, unless maybe some herd animals maybe leads the whole pack into a river that's going down a waterfall and everybody follows it. But you see, it's not a conscious intelligent thing. It's dumbness of the primitive mind, of the primitive nature, spontaneous nature. It's not something done with its high intelligence. We are the ones that, whose high intelligence, complex logical reasoning starts sort of uh, working, starts aiming against ourselves. Uh, and, and, and we have filled literature with um, conceptual morality and principles of, of, of describing that, describing that we can be this way or we can be that way and do not try not to be this way or try not to be that way. But what I'm saying is that all these things are the consequence of having a capacity that is larger than we can handle. In other words, it's like we have a, capa a, a capacity of intelligence, of logical reasoning that creates sciences and systems that is not held by a body in proportion and harmonious as evolution would have had it, but it, it's kind of like the, like they're trying something with us. You could some science fiction movie might put it that way, just to give the just to get the 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 volume the the model of, of of thinking across. And therefore, if we're bearing an intelligence that is a wonderful gift, because it means that we would be capable of living up immensely better even than we have ever dreamed as a world, as a, on, as a species on, in our world, it still is a constant state of unbalance. It's in the constant state in which we are too, we're like little ants trying to carry this huge glob of food that will have us happy for the whole winter. It will have all the ant, all the, the ant colony happy for the whole winter. We have to carry it to the, to the ant, uh, the ant, whatever. <laughs> but you know our legs are too small we're you know they come and somebody tries and help us we can't it's bigger than and this is intentional because it that much more of an intelligent capacity will mean that we can make our world that much better than any animal would have been able to make their this world for themselves 
So it is a gift, but we haven't identified that distance. We haven't identified the intercession. We haven't seen it as an outstanding element, an exceptional element, or a, a polarity of things that are that have a relationship. The, the, the the as the now see, my computer is just doing whatever it wants. Okay, let's hope it doesn't stop my... Okay. Um, and this realization would change. We would have to care for our... First, we would have to care for the species, like like everybody on a ship look at each other and be in agreement that we have to make it to the other to the island and everybody does their share and works together on the planet to get to that common existential cause which is the existence on this planet humanity has never known that we've been fighting each other and we our egos and all the ways that we know how to describe our problems are very uh, very much filling the narrative of humanity in this world. But we would first have to say, hey, oh my God. Now, that, oh my God, something wonderful has happened would be possibly a great motivator to drop our weapons and be thankful and stop looking at each other as enemies different languages across countries. Um, so thinking as one collective species would definitely start gearing us towards saying, okay, what do we do with this constant state of unbalance, this constant state of disproportion between our high reasoning capacity and what always gives us the, the keel, which is our on, uh, feet on the earth intelligence, creature base intelligence, spontaneous intelligence, which is always the reference because we may explore and we may try to reinvent the human body and then we realize we're being absurd and then we think we can eat plastic rice and, and then we realize, no, you're gonna end up like those birds they find on in the Marshall Islands, you know? full of plastic, so stop making plastic rice. And eventually, there is our north, as they say in Spanish, I think, is, is given to us by our creature, natural, in the moment, spontaneous, immediate, feet on the ground, um, spon uh, intuitive intelligence given to all life forms conscious life forms that comes with the body, sort of say. And our logical reasoning is sort of like a wild arm that's going all over the place and, you know, uh, done the worst things to ourselves with it. Uh, so what I'm proposing is that we, we see that there are two things. And by seeing the two, these are two things, by uh, acknowledging that they affect each other, that they have a relationship, that one goes crazy and the other one says, stop, you're hurting me. Uh, you don't understand that uh, that person really doesn't want to be a bad person, a murderer, a robber. Uh, prison doesn't work. That system doesn't even realize that there's natural redemption in the human mind that people want to belong and be... Uh, deep, deep inside, nobody wants to be different, nobody wants to destroy their own society, their own species, they all want to... But there's all these problems, psychological problems, educated by society wrongly, that you, judicial system, do not understand. You just lock people up in a, uh, because you can't deal with what they're doing to society anymore. And, and so we have no understanding of the disparity the, uh, between the wild, erring, uh, exploratively super precocious, yet unnatural and un inhuman almost in its audacity, high reasoning intelligence, and 
are sound, sober, intuitive, with uh, living life uh, form, body, in spontaneous, feet on the ground, mind. These two have never been isolated as two polar extremes that um, have an effect on each other. They have a they cause one to realize that they're being absurd and leaving the species and going somewhere completely you know we have to be reminded to come back and the interesting thing about this i don't know what to call it this uh, uh, theological theorem or spiritual uh unifying theory i don't know what what it could be called but the interesting is that as you go into it and you start looking at it at humanity this way differently you start seeing that we say things that are analogous to what it tries to explain in different literatures spiritual religious theological psychological sociological literatures are it's like we're we're all there are for bits and for for segments are describing this blind not really seeing what they're well this is what i'm saying they're describing even even uh scripture religious bible and other scriptures i, I wish i knew more i don't know many i know some of the bible and christian writings but um a lot of things start um echoing as a result of the simple pragmatic realist realism science realist scientific comprehension of our of the our existential paradigm uh that we find ourselves on the earth with uh, by intention of creators by intention, but still yet left alone to handle it to well, someday become aware of it and it's not so bad hey we should say thank you thank you for like maui you're welcome <laughs> um it's a disney movie never mind um because if we ever get it together and we 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 see the big picture we would uh have a, a wonderful life uh we would die in the most you know pleasant satisfied comfortable uh fulfilled manner any life form in the universe may know death or at least in to our in our category may our creators may indeed be able to you know be reborn so often that they get tired of it they just really want to go <laughs> they, wanna, they really want to leave i'm tired of coming back to the this world you know i want to so we still have um our this our ceiling is way up we don't have to worry about that um so yeah thankfulness okay appreciation and um the paradigm the con this uh i seeing identifying two uh and the relationship and the harm that this out of control given to us vast capacity afflicts us with and owning that is what would start having us see our own true predicament our own true uh existential paradigm which for the first time would create a third voice or perspective that says well we would want to live in a you know on, on beautiful floating lotus flowers or or in tree houses made with with natural branches or we would like to just pick food freely you know and have little fishies come up to our hands so we can swallow them without them ever knowing that you know we would have this wonderful uh, uh um i forgot where i was going with that um jesus christ We would want to live so and harmoniously 
uh, green and natural and ecologically supreme, but we have this capacity that would have, you know, we also love our engineering and the things that we can achieve through science. Uh, we are off because we've never seen, we are off thinking, well, you know, let's make ourselves taller, you know, or we have other ideas of what to do with this prowess. Uh, but perhaps by seeing just what an exceptional gift it is for this animal body, for this simple simian human being, it is that we have been endowed with this amazing intelligence. We will start appreciating where to put it, <laughs> where, to, where to dedicate it to more. And we'd have a sense by realizing the discrepancy, the instability, the imbalance of this high intelligence, high logical reasoning compared to what the sober wisdom of our on, on earth, uh, physical human being, human intelligence. Um, we have never done that. We have never had a view on, on this, on a, on, on, a, on this paradigm that would be our actual description. We've never, we've only seen ourselves as, you know, one, <laughs> one disunited, chaotic, uh, intelligence, one disunited, chaotic, contradictory, hypocritical, singular intelligence. We had never seen ourselves as us, um, a capacity or a struggle or a capacity, I'd rather say, of the higher intelligence that is whacked out because it does not, it did not evolve with our over, you know, millions of years in the cosmos. It, it's sort of an, the intention, the bringing together, an intentional bringing together into our species of something through evolution, perhaps. I'm not saying that, you know, we're, but you know, it's funny because like I said before, there are um, little segments of like, we're, we see little windows, some in science fiction, sort of pseudo, pseudo modernistic, uh, what do you call it? Pop religions where they say that um, the, the, the Sumerians, uh, experimented and created a type of human being on the planet, you know? So it seems like we, we come at it from different directions, but in any case, so this takes me to the, uh, the last part of what we're still asking. <laughs> what is God? Are there people in the, are there others in the, are we alone in the universe and all this, all these other existential questions. I want you to put yourself in the shoes or in the feet of that first, those first human beings, you know, with, with our, uh, at some, you know, uh, having started, uh, somewhere in our, in this, uh, paradigm of a high intelligence, high capacity compared to what feels right to the intelligence of our gut and having a society in this existential paradigm as a, you know, very primitive, perhaps when we first started inventing tools and language and grammar and objects and agriculture and things. And, um, we started having big ideas and later, um, we'd see that that invention would fall on our heads, would end up being the same tool that killed my children. And something in our mind triggered to, was triggered to think that that doesn't seem right. That's not, that should not have happened. I'd have done something to better my society, the, the condition of my clan, and then it somehow come around and cause me so much hurt to my own thriving, to my own uh, progress. 
this be so, so so destructive? And why would I have that that question, that that non acceptance? Because remember, my first force is thriving, succeeding. That's the first force, forward, life, living, right? Consuming in order to combustionize, combustionize and grow and and multiply and continue living and radiating like the star forward, giving and loving and taking and receiving, which is actually combustion and exchange. It's there is no symmetrical duality of opposites in in life in, in in the comprehension of existence but let's put that little side note so because it's always forward going forward living and thriving that something that came from me would result in so much betrayal like my own species coming and killing uh, through a calculated devious plan, people in my clan, and maybe their children, their their grandparents are our children from our own clan. And it doesn't make sense to the central mind of always forward, life thriving evolution. And so, humanity, because of the discrepancy, the error of its logical reasoning that created, created, created so many systems, inventions, and and da 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 and then all of a sudden it collapses and ends up contaminating the water, killing your own children, uh, putting a whole bunch of people up on the air in a, in a contraption and it falls, and why would we do it again and try it again? And, you know, this contradiction almost, as one of the results of this perpetually condemned to fail uh, logical high intelligence which is more than we can handle and therefore fails on us um, poses this question now we know that our in our mind our the human mind always needs to answer questions once we you know we have a question about something it's like we just don't walk away and say oh well who cares no um maybe now some kids do but in reality that's not how we evolved right we um we must answer we must give an explanation we don't things don't sit right until we understand what it is and we explain it to our satisfaction so when this this contradiction, this hypocrisy, this living hypocrisy of our uh, existential paradigm that we ourselves betray ourselves, which does not make sense to the, the forward thriving force of evolution in life, posed that question, we had to answer it. We had to answer it and we didn't, couldn't let it go because something continued to not make sense. It continues to not make sense that we would be so enthralled and excited about this intelligence that builds cities only to then house people in jails and prisons. And again, the question, this is not why we created architecture. That's not, that's not in accordance with evolution and thriving and forwardness and love and all the force of of light it's not it's so the question would never go away and because we have to answer because we we must answer the question so that we especially when they nag and they they get worse and they're more hurtful uh, their non answer is non is more hurtful every time and doesn't we finally, at some point, or maybe immediately, we had to explain that. We had to explain it. What could explain it? We explain, explain it by saying, this is the will of God. What is God? Well, some, you know, creator. And we created a whole bunch of literatures what God is and what he did, how he created life and he created us. 
And then we created narratives to explain, and, you know, you're born in sin, you had the apple, and blah, 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 or we were once in the, the what was it called? The, um, in Australia, the, um, the, the, oh, Jesus, I forgot. The rainbow, the rainbow time, or something. All religious scriptures have explanations, explanations to answer this discrepancy between our capacity and what sensibly makes sense to the other extreme of our polar intelligence, which is, you know, I would never kill my own offspring. I need to thrive. I, I need to move forward. I would never kill the offspring of my, my equal. In other, you know, it doesn't make sense to the, the base physical feet on the ground, intuitive, spontaneous, natural human intelligence that um, those things happen. It makes no sense. So by, we had to, we were forced, in other words, we forced ourselves to explain the discrepancy between these two polar extremes of our intelligence. Except that we explained it as we, a singular we, were created somehow. We explained it in many ways. This is the whole thing. We filled that area that now I'm simply describing as a existential condition, a paradigm, a, a physical, scientifically understandable paradigm as our describing existential condition, we explained it in many ways. We explained that somebody else did this because it doesn't make sense that we would want to kill our own children or that we would continue to make the same mistakes uh, because it doesn't make sense to this, the, the first mind, which is the always forward, live, push forward, continue to radiate life and forwardness. That's a singular force. And to that singular force, the contradiction didn't make sense. So we, um, we had to answer it and we did. We filled history with literature to answer that. Now, um, nothing. That's it. It was, I'm not saying it was part of the plan that eventually one day we'd be able to throw that old jacket out and, and, and see ourselves for why we needed those stories. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that it's easy now. It's, um, it's, um, possible to stand in the reality of our existential condition and own the fact that we are in an unstable, an unstable, blessed, <laughs> an unstable, unbalanced, blessed creature because we're aware of that unbalance. We can, we are blessed because we're capable of being aware of this ex uh, disproportional capacity, paradigm, contradiction in our, uh, in our as, as, as a being, as a living being, and therefore by being aware of it, we can say, hey, this is, this is what ha will happen to us if we don't always check for this extreme, so uh, intelligent capacity and its tendency to always be blind about our humanity and, and have so much prowess and so much daring, uh, audacious, um, explorative, creative capacity that it needs to be kept in check by us, by ourselves. Um, it's like creating a third perspective in the middle of us that says, we know that what we want always is to go back, to be natural, to be with our, everything that makes sense to the body, to the, to the family, to what every teenager and adolescent would want, to 
whatever grandparent would want, what a society would want, what every individual we want, would want is to be forgiven, is to be free, is to be understood, is to be loved, is to be is to belong. Uh, these things are make sense to us, like the the same ones make sense to another living creature on this planet. And we can also own, we also know that we will just do crazy in creatively engineering, scientific, system prone inventions capacity. What are we going to direct them to? Are we going to direct them towards making the organic, natural body that is the human being as healthy and thriving in its own natural form as possible? Or are we just going to be lost trying to um, reinvent, you know, maybe maybe we can put an eye here, you know, or maybe we can we can put grow us in a petri dish or, you know, where are we going to direct it? Are we going to go against ourselves or are we going to just be out of control? Because until now, we thought we were in control of that other polar extreme of our intelligence. But we have proven and we have known this for a long time and we've been saying it, but it seems that it never made sense to people when scientists said it. But one thing you can count on is that science will always end up uh, encounter its error. We will always fail in sciences. And why? Well, because it's not, wasn't, it didn't exactly come with cosmic evolution. It was an intention, an added disproportionate capacity so that we would learn one day how to use it for our for, you know, to make the best world we can for ourselves and uh, uh, not uh, let it fl flag like a, like a, like a flail, like a flag in the wind, but actually own our paradigm, own our own um, uh, state. Uh, unresolved, unresolvable state that allows for change because precisely because it is perpetually unstable and unbalanced and uh, seeming ex extraordinary to uh, what would be a harmonious intelligence with the human being allows for us to its instability allows for us to uh, to to freely uh, own it and and uh, and talk about it and 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 direct it in ways that we will increasingly believe uh, or understand it's better. It's even better than than last year. It's even better than before. It's even better than yesterday. Uh, but we will never have that third perspective discourse if we keep thinking, if we keep not knowing how we came to be, how the world came to be, how humanity came to be the way we are. Okay, I hope all of that made sense.